Coming up, investigating the Toyota 2.8 DPF drama and the moral case for DPFs with nutbag commenters for navigation. Yes! I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Aussie new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. I will expose my finest nuts in just a second. But first, I have a question for you. Does Toyota have a problem with its DPF installation on the new 2.8 litre 1GD FTV engine? That's the one in the latest Hilux, Prado and Fortuna with peak outputs of 130 kilowatts and 450 newton metres or 420 in Fortuna. This is a real smoke and fire scenario because there are simply far too many anecdotal reports of DPFs on these engines failing early, sometimes with multiple repeat failures and in situations where they should not fail. It seems Toyota's reputation for unbreakable reliability could be on the ropes here. What I've learned so far is that this engine is the fifth injector type. It's got a separate fuel injector for the DPF to ramp up the temperature of the exhaust to achieve regeneration. There seems to be two distinct failure modes, one involving blockage of the DPF and going into limp mode, which is not all that much fun if you're I don't know, 500 k's out of Kuba PD or something. And the other infamous continuous white smoke failure mode, which is kind of like James Bond, but without pussy galore. So I'm surmising that the DPF blockage is due to under-enthusiastic regeneration and the white smoke over-enthusiastic. It may be that the fifth injector jams itself closed in the case of DPF blockage and jams itself open in the case of the white smoke. And that means complete failure of the regeneration in the case of blockage and essentially continuous regeneration in the other case, destroying the DPF's innards with non-stop pyromania. I'd be interested to hear your experience in the comments below if you are a sufferer of either of these failure modes. Please let us know what treatment you received at the dealership too and whether or not they fixed the problem. In the course of researching this issue, the nuttiest statement of all time from Toyota came from the Toyota Great Britain blog attempting to answer the oft-asked lofty question, what does a diesel particulate filter actually do? The DPF is fitted within the exhaust system and is designed to catch soot particles and nitrous oxide from the combustion process that would otherwise be released into the atmosphere. The DPF is highly effective and traps around 80% of these harmful particulates. Make a note. Dear British Toyota Science imbeciles. NOx is a class of gases, not just nitrous oxide, there are several. More importantly though, gases are not particles and therefore particle filters cannot trap them. NOx is treated either in the catalytic converter or by the injection of AdBlue or urea in the exhaust. How friggin hard is it to get this stuff right? Perhaps you got the intern to write that or some inbred like, I don't know, a member of the royal family? I sense the hand of a senior marketing asshole in all of this. It's like a disturbance in the force. And now, to your fascinating DPF comments. Maybe a stupid question, but can't you take the DPF out and put in your oven to burn out the stuff? Yes, very perceptive and quite correct. That is a breathtakingly stupid question, Frederico. But I'm sure you can do better. You've certainly got what it takes. Ignoring for a moment that DPFs are designed to heat themselves up and ignoring that they're not exactly installed down there with quick release couplings. And I guess ignoring that it's probably something of a bad idea to carry a tin full of highly carcinogenic particles into one's kitchen and ignoring that it's almost certainly a poor decision indeed to put a tin full of 
carcinogenic particles into the same enclosure as one's Sunday roast. And this is a significant number of hurdles to get past. But putting them aside, regeneration, it takes place at six or 700 degrees C. And my oven just doesn't go that high. If it did, you could buy my new recipe book, Charred, Cooking with Carbon, the Charcoal Superfood Diet. Any auto DPF regen is a ticking time bomb. Diesels used to be known for their reliability and longevity, but with cleverness, they've out themselves. Amazingly enough, there is a kernel of truth to this. DPFs are in fact a very good idea because the particles are very bad for you. Here in Australia, exhaust pollution from motor vehicles kills more people then motor vehicle crashes. But it just doesn't get the same run in the media. Dying in a car crash, I guess, especially if you're an actress who's killed by a moron on the way home from a methadone clinic, which happened recently here, tragically, that is far sexier from a media perspective than just dying in hospital from cancer or congestive heart failure. But just as important, I'd suggest, to the person who dies and also their family. Unfortunately, the implementation of DPFs by car makers, failing to make them robustly reliable, has tarnished the reputation of the technology in much the same way that Ford and Volkswagen took the dual clutch transmission into the prison shower fatefully, from which it emerged with its reputation around its ankles. After owning two diesels never again, too many DPF issues, Costs are ridiculous. Yes, they are. Redick your ass, quite. And the runaround you get from dealers is too. Dealers are seldom schooled in the ancient art of DPF failure analysis. DPFs usually fail as a consequence of some other vestigially related problem. If the dealer just changes the DPF without tackling or identifying the underlying issue, it just fails again and you are stuck in this insane Groundhog Day loop from which you declare from a pit of utter despair and frustration that you will never buy another DPF equipped vehicle again, understandably. Can you delete the DPF like a Cadillac converter bypass pipe sounds like a mess. Yeah, the catalytic converter bypass pipe. That's a good point. When you put it like that, though, it does sound like a mess. My advice, do it. Do it now and send me the video because I'd really like to see that. P.S. Was school out of order the entire time you were a child? It's terrible when the education system leaves someone behind. Delete the DPF ASAP and block the EGR valve. Why force hot stale exhaust back through the clean air fuel intake? Oh, it's for pollution. Well, we live in Australia, not China or Europe. Dear whack job. Firstly, let me say that Australia needs no additional uneducated moron bogan imbeciles. So please don't breed or vote. Secondly, according to the Department of Transport and Regional Services, specifically the Bureau of Transport and Regional Economics, ambient air pollution from motor vehicles in this country kills about 1,500 people annually. That's about 50% more death than the road toll. And while there are a staggering number of resources directed at the road toll, there are precious few that are marshaled up against this far bigger premature silent killer. The total cost of death and disease from motor vehicle pollution is estimated at $2.7 billion. So if you're paying tax, you are footing this bill. You can download the report for free. It's called Health Impacts of Transport Emissions in Australia, Economic Costs. It's kind of interesting in an insomnia cure way. You simply cannot make the case that exhaust pollution is not a problem because we are in Australia. The population here is among the world's most urbanised and our air pollution laws are among the worst in the developed world. I'm sorry the education system left you behind too, edgy man. DPF delete, John. Stuff the authorities arguably in court, not fit for purpose. 
anything we do in Australia won't make a scrap of difference to air quality or climate change. If we can send a man to the moon, surely we can find a better engineering solution than the DPF. Would you get the education minister on the line? I think we've got an outbreak. Intellectual deficit disorder. Again, I blame the flu ride. Yeah. This is what happens when a bunch of lawyers run the government, right? Anybody who chooses to live their lives dumber than dog shit is simply allowed to do so. And we even give them an internet connection and a keyboard. I don't know why. Paul, I would call you a dumb <laughs> cock, but in fact, the rooster is a proud and cunning creature, and I would not do my fine specimen this disservice by lowering his bar. See what I did there? My cock and I have discussed this at length over a fine single malt, and I must say, he makes far more sense than you do, Paul. Plus, he's a hit with the chicks. You pull him out at a party and they'll just line up for a stroke. You should try it. It's quite uplifting. DPFs have nothing to do with climate change or smog or visual pollution. The particles trapped by DPFs give you lung cancer and cardiorespiratory diseases generally. If you don't trap them, they kill people early. Dumbing this down to the point that possibly even you can understand, Paul, dying early of lung cancer is, I'm sure, a lot less fun than having a car with a DPF designed to prevent this. Most people would probably agree with that. Furthermore, the people who actually got men to the moon, brilliant engineers and scientists, they were very different to you, Paul. And I think it's fair to say that your use of the term we in this context is highly offensive, simply because the people who achieved this incredible feat are not one bit like you. The salient difference, they were all alive from the neck up. In short, the moral and economic case for DPFs is abundantly clear, but the dodgy implementation of DPF systems by some, but not all, car makers is something to be condemned. This third-rate R&D has put a massive dent in the reputation of a technology that can only benefit the population as a whole in every city on Earth, and it sparked a whole cottage industry of aftermarket DPF deletion, correction, premature respiratory disease and death promoters. I'm John Cadogan. If your DPF fails prematurely, do not cop the repair bill on the chin. Do not simply accept a DPF replacement without adequate investigation, diagnosis and resolution of the underlying problem. Hold the car maker's feet to the fire on this. Grow a pair. If the engineering is underdone, make them accountable. In Australia, at least, consumer law is on your side, even after the warranty expires. Google ACCC Consumer Guarantees for more information on that. And if you are possessed by a demon in the form of a dodgy Toyota 2.8 DPF, let me know in the comments below. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.